Okay, so there I was, trying to get ready for the mid-set finale at the premier tournament of set 9 in North America that would see one player go to Worlds. Worlds! And I wanted to be that player. There are a lot of ways to prep for tournaments. You can do in-house with other top players, you can watch a lot of streams, or, in my case, you can test out as much as you can on ladder. Every day for almost two weeks, I was testing the boundaries of units, items, augments, more thongs will, and more to make sure I was as intimately familiar with the patch as possible. Enter this game. I had already been at it for a few days and was starting to feel really comfortable with the more meta stuff in the patch and wanted to start trying to find some sauce. And oh boy, did I find it. She is a little monstrous in her ability to just kill everything. Is the Oh he does get more HP the higher level star level he is. Oh man. Not that it really matters. It's five HP, it's not like it's not crazy. Is Cho busted in hyper roll with the double bonus HP thing? Any hyper roll players in chat? Is Cho just like God in that mode? Do 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 do. Yeah, Velcods is definitely really good. Oh, what the heck? Four poppies, four Cho's. No knowers. I just thought up of a. I, I just thought up a, a really interesting idea for a board. Just now. Hopefully, it doesn't come to pass. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh God, he's gonna reroll Poppy or Chogath, and I'm happy to say that I'm not rerolling Poppy or Chogath. I'm rerolling Poppy and Chogath. The thing is, one of the most important parts of TFT is being able to adapt to what you hit and to turn as much as you can into a high roll. If you get to a point where you can play around everything, then there's a lot more you can high roll game to game. The way to get comfortable playing around everything is to try stuff out. And if I want to win mid set and get to worlds, then I need to know if you're rolling Poppy and Cho'Gath is a viable out. But don't worry, I was pretty sure we'd be fine. And for one reason in particular. One furry, annoying, probably kind of smelly reason. The key to our game was Teemo, who at first glance was like a pretty mediocre two cost. But Teemo has a secret, a horrible, game-changing secret. When you have Teemo 3 and two other three-starred units with the Yordle synergy on your board, Teemo goes from one of the worst units in the game to maybe the single best unit. There are some glaring issues with this Frankenstein's monster of a unit though. The first is that he's too expensive to hit. Generally, you want to refresh shops on six to hit Teemo 3, but doing so often results in you not being able to 3-star 2 other units to let them transform, as 3-starring 3 2 costs is insanely expensive. And if you try to reroll 1 cost instead, you're going to miss because of shop odds. The other glaring issue with Teemo is how weak he is at 2 and 3-star. If you don't have a plan for mid-game, you're just going to die. We have an answer to both problems though. We have so many Poppies and so many Cho'Gaths that we don't need to worry about 3-starring units besides Teemo even if we roll on 6. And if we roll a lot at the beginning of stage 3 to hit a Cho'Gath 3, he should be able to carry us for a while, and we can just maybe, maybe, get to see Teemo 4 this game. So, with my hopes of prepping for mid-set on the line, I did the do. First things first, I rolled for Cho 3 on 3-1, and that guy was popping off over the next couple of stages. He was eating, he was stacking, and most importantly, he was keeping me healthy while I stayed up some gold to try to find Teemo's. I found and played Velkaz, which made bridging the gaps between Teemo, Poppy, and Cho way easier. You could say it was the weird tentacle thingy glue keeping the team together. I started hitting more Teemos, I was only one Poppy away from Poppy 3, and I got a Tactician's Crown from the portal letting me play another unit. Things were looking good. I had made one major mistake though, and that's this thing. Here's why. It's time for some math. Some mana math. Man is a stat that's a lot more grounded in practicality than other stats. For example, 15 extra AD will always be better than 10 AD, and it'll affect the fight in some kind of way, uh, but 15 mana is often no better than 10 mana. But, but, Mr. Eppies, it's a bigger number, why isn't it better? 
That's a great question, little Timmy. To get our answer, we have to look at how units generate mana. There are two ways for that to happen. Way one is to attack, which will always generate 10 mana, unless you have a Spear of Shogun, then it will be 15 mana. Way two is to get hit, and that generates an amount of mana based on how hard the hit was. Once you get enough mana to cast, any extra mana generated is lost until the casting period is over. That means that if you have 45 mana and need 50 to cast, 5 of the 10 mana on your next attack will be wasted. This potential waste of mana means that you have to be extra careful when slamming mana generation items. There's a common misconception that attack speed works better with Spear of Shoujin than it does blue buff, but this is false. All that matters when comparing the two is how many attacks it takes to cast, not how fast those attacks come out. The reason Spear of Shoujin is a lot worse than buff here is that Teemo has 50 mana, which means that Spear of Shoujin will be a 4 attack cast with the last attack wasting 10 mana, while Blue will be a 3 attack cast as long as he kills something. Which, I mean, of course he will, he's a Teemo 4, man! In pretty classic TFT player fashion, I had slammed Shoujin back in stage 2 or 3, thinking Teemo had 60 mana, turns out he had 50 mana, uh, and it was starting to really get me punished. Luckily though, I was offered an Ornite artifact for my last Dogman, and that, along with my Medic Remover, would mean that I had the ability to move Shoujin to Velkaz and Manazine to Teemo. Sightings rolled down for Teemo 4 and then move items, I said one last prayer to Mort and started to hit D. Okay, too much with yeah, I skipped a Velkaz. Oh darn. Oh, we just hit Velkaz 3 instead of uh, the other guy. Oh, darn. we hit. We actually hit. I don't really want to remake, do I? Maybe I should just remake. I'm just going to remake. It's probably better to remake than to try to go Velkaz 3 here. And so, with Teemo 4 on the board, the slaughter began. Final hurdle was here, a Piltover player. I lost the fight and needed to win two more, but I knew what I had to do. With some good positioning and some really bad humming, I might just be able to do it. Like this, then the Ergot can't get on my back line. Which is ideal. Because it hits Swain, then jumps behind Swain. I can never get hit, just hit my back line for free. Dude, this hot, this Teemo darn rolls people. God damn. And then the final fight. It should have a similar effect as long as we just stay. Like this. I mean, I, I can try to Zephyr the thing as well if I want. Get the Senna. I think I don't care too much about Zephyring the, uh, the Zeri. On the position like this, the fight should be okay every time, I think. Obviously, there's fight RNG, and I actually don't know how much of Teemo's shrooms are RNG and how much of them is just, like, consistent, but it just looks like it's good. Not every Hyrule is going to be apparent at first glance. But if you keep your mind open and your eyes wide, you'll be surprised at what you can find.
That was a really fun game. <laughs> that was a really, really, really fun game. Oh, and I lost a tie rate over 16th at mid-set. Satch.